am 38, which means I was born in 1980, which makes me Generation X. I'm not a millennial. My roommate in L.A. is a millennial. My roommate Darren, he's 23. I don't feel old until I talk to him. Because I realized I don't know any of the millennial slang. Like last week, he's like, yo, Eric, this girl just ghosted me. I'm like, what's that mean? He's like, oh, getting ghosted? That's when you hook up with someone a few times or you go on a few dates. Then they stop answering your messages. They don't return your calls. They vanish from your life like a ghost. I'm like, well, first of all, that term makes zero sense. Ghosts don't ignore you. They pop out. They make noise. Ghosts want you to know they're there. That's what a haunting is. A ghost trying to get your attention. No one's like, I think this place is haunted, but that fucking ghost keeps blowing me off. I ask Ouija board questions, no response. Can you imagine if someone you were dating started ghosting you? That would be the scariest shit ever. Lisa's fucking ghosting me, man. She comes in at midnight, knocks paintings off the walls. She's bending forks in half. If you don't want to fuck me anymore, just say so. She's stacking the kitchen chairs on top of the fucking table. I came out of the shower, she wrote, I know what you did in the mirror. What the fuck did I do? No, ghosts don't avoid people. You know who avoids people? Bigfoot. That should be the term. Lisa fucking Bigfooted me. I saw her at a party and she took off into the woods. All I have is one blurry picture of her on my phone. People think I'm making this shit up. But we had stupid slang in the 90s. I don't like when people my age try to use 90s slang now. It feels wrong. I see my friend Corey, he's 38, he's like, what's up, dog? I'm like, Corey, we are going bald. We are no longer dogs. Look at this. At this point, we're hairless cats. Millennials have smooth ass slang, though. They have Netflix and chill. That means come over and we'll have sex. But that's a smooth way to say it. It's very non-threatening. We didn't have anything even close in the 90s. We didn't have a smooth term. Blockbuster and blowjob just doesn't roll off the tongue. You want to come over for some play with my balls and basic cable? What, you don't like TBS? I got hit movies on there, you stuck-up bitch. I travel around a lot doing comedy. I stay in the shittiest hotels possible to save money. I stayed at the Comfort Inn. $43 on Priceline. I check in this asshole behind the front desk. He's like, well, Eric, we need to authorize your credit card an extra $35 a day for incidentals. I'm like, I don't know what that means. He's like, oh, that's in case you damage the room. We charge you $35. I'm like, let me get this straight. It's only $35 to trash this room? I'll throw the fucking TV out the window. Are you serious? I will burn this shithole to the ground. I'm wiping my ass on the drapes. Put it on my tab, motherfucker! Keep the change, bitch! They have a safe in the room. The room is $43. I am broke. Stop bullshitting ourselves. $43, what are people putting in this safe? Chicken McNuggets? I have nothing. I forgot the combination. I can't get my McMuffin. Open the fucking safe. My McMuffin's getting cold. I'm fucking starving. If you have something valuable enough to go in that safe, sell it and go to the Marriott. The Comfort Inn. It's known as a choice hotel. 
Because if you're staying there, you have no other fucking choice. I check in the guy behind the desk. He's like, do you want to join Choice Hotels Rewards? I'm like, what is this shit? He's like, oh, if you stay at the Comfort Inn 15 times in a year, you get a free night stay. Who is staying at the Comfort Inn 15 times in a year? You're either cheating on your wife or making meth in the bathtub. Either way, you don't deserve a reward. They always have those gift shops in the lobbies. Everything's overpriced. I got a Dr. Pepper. It was $8. I didn't even drink it. I went up to the room and put it in the safe. You ever stay at a nice hotel? They have that TV channel that's like about the hotel. Who is watching this? They're showing me pictures of the room. I'm in the room. How high do you have to be to watch this? Like, <sighs> man, that's a nice room. I'm definitely staying there next time. This room sucks. It reeks like weed in here. Took an Uber here tonight. I don't like how the Uber drivers rate us. Like, I am paying you my money to provide me a service, and you're going to rate me? Fuck you, Ethan. Just drive me to the Starbucks and shut the fuck up. But my roommate's an Uber driver. He's like, no, if you don't talk to us, we think you're a dick, and we'll give you a low rating. And if you drop below three stars, a lot of Uber drivers won't even pick you up. I'm like, what? I don't have a car. I can't afford to get banned from Ubers. I'm talking my ass off the entire time. I'm laughing at their jokes. I'm giving out ridiculous compliments. I love how slow you're driving, Ethan. It's refreshing. A lot of drivers try to get you there fast. Not you. You have taken it in a different direction, and God damn it, I respect that. Oh, you missed my exit. Now we have more time to spend together. I don't want this night to end. What's that? I'd love to hear the song you wrote. Are you shitting me? You have the album in the car? Shut the fuck up. How long is this piece of shit? 19 tracks? Crash the fucking car! I had an Uber driver call me on my phone. He's like, hey man, I'm stuck in traffic. I'm six blocks away. Would you mind walking to the car? Well, yeah, I do. That's why I called Uber. Because I don't feel like walking around. I'm paying you, you penis. I'm not here to make life easier for you. Walk to the car. I'll just meet you at your house. How about that? I'll take an Uber to you. Where do you want to go? I'll drive. I'm giving myself five fucking stars. What other job rates the customers? You don't get done eating at Chili's. The waiter comes up. I gave you one star. You got shit stuck in your teeth. You're chewing with your mouth open. You didn't leave room for dessert. You're just not Chili's material. Get the fuck out of here. You guys take Ubers. You ever have them cancel the trip? Well, what is this bullshit? This guy calls me. I swear to God. He's like, I gotta cancel the trip because I can't find you. You can't find me? What am I missing? I am out front of the Applebee's, motherfucker. I'm not hiding in the trees. I gave you the exact address. You have a GPS in the car. You see the little dot? That's me. Drive to the dot. You see the little car? That is you. You see the dot running after that motherfucker? That is me. Stop and get the dot. No other job cancels in the middle because they don't feel like looking for shit. You don't order your food at McDonald's. They're like, oh, I can't find the fries. No, I'm canceling the number six. I don't know where they are. Fuck you. 
No, I didn't check the fry machine. I don't feel like it. Give me five stars, thanks. I was in Salt Lake City last week. I had a Mormon Uber driver, I swear to God. I get in the car, shut the door. He's like, Eric, has anyone ever talked to you about the Church of Latter-day Saints? I'm like, you can just drop me off right here. Remember back in the day they'd knock on your door, you had to hide under the fucking couch? Now you're trapped in the car going 60 down the street. <laughs> you, fucking, you can't hide in that Prius. Like, you're going to hear all about the Latter-day Saints today, motherfucker. I found God in that car. I'm like, please, Lord, make him stop talking. I'll change my ways. Just give him laryngitis, Lord, please. I am sober. It's hard because my roommate, Darren, he smokes weed all day long. Like, I don't need that kind of shit in my house. Then he went to New Jersey for three days to visit his parents. I opened the refrigerator door. There's a gigantic Tupperware thing filled with delicious chocolate brownies. I ate them all. I didn't know they were pot brownies. He came home three days later. I'm standing on the kitchen table, balls naked. He's like, Eric, where are the brownies? I am the brownies. He's like, Eric, you should try CBD oil. I'm like, what's that? He's like, oh, it's like weed, but the shit that makes you high has been taken out. Oh, well, that sounds fucking awesome. You give me a sack of that highless weed. I'll do a big hit and then I'll wash it down with an ice cold O'Doul's. <laughs> then I'm gonna drink some decaf coffee and eat a gluten free chocolate cupcake with all the fucking chocolate frosting scraped off. <laughs> then I'm gonna jerk off and right before I come, I'll stop and check my credit score. <laughs> I'm just kidding, I have perfect credit. It's a hundred. I miss the 90s, I miss the 90s. That's when I was raised. That's what I remember. These fucking millennials, they don't know how good they got it. Life was hard in the early 90s. Times was tough. You don't believe me? Remember how hard it was to find one of your friends? before smartphones and the internet. If you called their house and they didn't answer, that was it. <laughs> the trail had run cold. <laughs> you had to track them down, look for clues. You had to be Jason Bourne to find people in the early 90s. Everyone 38 and up should automatically get to be a detective. <laughs> oh, that's right. Just walk into the police station. Like, do you have any experience? Yes, I had to find people before Facebook. <laughs> Get laid before Tinder and drive home drunk before Uber. They're like, welcome to the force, Lieutenant. <laughs> I'm gonna make that show. CSI 1992. Just a bunch of guys in Pearl Jam shirts tracking people down. <laughs> We gotta find Dave. I called his house. No one answered the phone. Well, fuck it. That's the end of the show. Roll the credits. I don't know what else to do. Dave's fucking dead. Then I'll make a spinoff. CSI 2018. We gotta find Dave. He's in the bathroom taking a shit. How do you know that? He just like five of my posts. No, no one likes posts on the toilet. I don't know what to make of this fucking crap. You're not Mormon and you don't shit and like Instagrams. We got nothing in common. One fucking clap from this guy. <laughs> I'm a comic bully that weighs 10 pounds. <laughs> don't make me come out. <laughs> Even when I'm mad, I'm the least intimidating. I just look like an elf. <laughs> You're not gonna get any cookies, motherfucker. <laughs> If there was a tree behind me, 90 you'd be like, why isn't he going into his home? Doesn't he live in the bark? By the way, why are we still going to college? Like, like, what job can you learn how to do on the internet? Well, you're gonna save four years of your life and 50 grand and fucking Google it. Watch a TED Talk. Watch a YouTube tutorial. You can get any job. 
When they're like, do you have any experience? Be like, bitch, I have Alexa. What do you need me to know? I can be a doctor. I have WebMD. Like, tell me your symptoms. Okay, you have hepatitis. That'll be $300. Don't touch me. Times were harder back in the 90s. I can prove it. Raise your hand if you ever tried to move a 90s console TV. They weighed 12 tons. You didn't even take it when you left. You're like, just let the other family have it. Tell them to start lifting weights. I don't know what else to do. If it broke, you didn't even throw it away. You put another TV on top of that motherfucker. I'm like, Dad, there's nothing on TV. He's like, you're watching the wrong one. The top one works, the bottom one's just for decoration. <laughs> Remember those landlines? You get tangled in that fucking cord. You could not multitask with a landline. Yeah. You take something out of the fridge, put it in the microwave, you're fucking tied up in the cord. It's wrapped around my neck. I'm hanging from the kitchen wall. My dad comes in, he thinks I was trying to commit autoerotic asphyxiation. I told you Eric was a pervert, look at him. That's how he gets his little dick off, watching leftover Papa John spin around in the microwave. If that what does it for you, hon, the goddamn SpaghettiOs, you piece of shit. <laughs> Everyone shits on the millennials. I like the millennials. People shit on the millennials so bad. Oh, the millennials, all they do all day is walk around taking selfies on their phones. We didn't do that back in my day. Well, you didn't have a smartphone, or you would've. People are self-obsessed. Any generation that had the smartphone would've taken the selfies. Some years might have been a little more bleak than others. Maybe the 1940s. Just got drafted into World War II. Hashtag fuck my life. <laughs> kids not get straight A's on their homework now? You have the Apple Watch. You have the iPad. You have the fucking eyes thing. Whatever the homework question is, Google it. Copy it down in your notebook. A plus. If you are a kid right now in school getting B's, you are a doofus. What do we have to do in the 90s? Ask our parents for help. You ask your parents for help on your homework, you turn it in, get it back, and realize your parents were fucking idiots. <laughs> My dad could never talk shit to me again. He's like, Eric, you got a D. I'm like, motherfucker, you got an F. <laughs> My grades have gone up since I stopped talking to you. I'm pretty sure you can't read. <laughs> and guys, remember how hard it was to masturbate? in the early 90s. These kids can whack, they're whacking off all over the place. They got porn on the phones, the eye, the watch. They're watching people fuck. Jesus Christ, I had to wait for my parents to go to sleep, creep down the stairs, turn on Cinemax, which we didn't even get, and try and see someone's nipples through the fuzz. I hope they were nipples. I didn't know what the fuck I was watching. It could have been Free Willy too, for all I know. <laughs> Jesus Christ. And if there was a one in a million chance you'd get caught masturbating, your ears would pick up noises that fucking wolves cannot hear. <laughs> if I heard one creak on the stairs, I would freeze like a frightened deer. <laughs> The first time I saw a deer, I thought we just caught him jerking off. I was like, don't hit him, that could have been me. Remember the disc man? That was the worst invention ever. Because the whole reason you got a disc man was so you could walk around and rock out to your CDs. But if you moved at all, the fucking CD would skip. You had to tiptoe down the sidewalk like a cat burglar stealing art from a museum to get through one uninterrupted verse of Blink-182. To this day, I don't know how my 90s songs go without the skipping. I'm at karaoke like, isn't it ironic, 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 ironic. 
Everyone 38 and up is clapping. He sounds just like the CD. Close your eyes, it's like Atlantis is here. Can we be serious, people? I deleted my Groupon. Don't buy, I was addicted to the Groupons. Cause every picture, everyone's fuck. And everything's $9. I was just buying shit cause I wanted to be happy like that. Don't buy a bunch of Groupons when you're drunk and lonely at like three in the morning. Because you will buy too many and the Groupons expire. Sometimes you have to use up like 11 Groupons by like Sunday at six, or you lose your entire Groupon investment. And it's a very eclectic mix of activities. It makes for some interesting dates. She's like, where are we going Saturday? Well, first we're getting laser hair removal. <laughs> then we're getting our assholes bleached in a hot air balloon. So let's do this. Spread your cheeks, this cost me $9.99. I'm terrible. I'm terrible at the internet. For a whole year, I thought Uber Eats was a German porn site. <laughs> I made an Instagram video last week. I was going to show this girl. She's like, I don't watch Instagram videos, Eric. They're too long. Too long? It's a minute. If you think a minute's a long time, then we should fuck. Because I will blow your mind. We making two Instagrams tonight! <laughs> My parents live in Florida, man. They got a silver alert. It means missing old person. I swear to God. And they put it on these digital billboards above the highway. Why? We are driving. No one is looking up there. We're busy looking down at our phones. <laughs> That's why they need to make it a game on the phone like Pokemon. They'll find those old people in 10 seconds. These kids can find a Pikachu in the woods at midnight. They can find Dolores in the Walgreens parking lot. Find Nana, 600 points, let's go. Oh, oh thanks. I am a comedian. I've been a comedian for like a million years. People wonder what it's like being a comedian. Very boring during the day, especially now that I'm sober. Like having 23 hours a day without pot is a long time. You have nothing to do and you have no money to do it. I've seen everything on Netflix 97 times and those documentaries are starting to seep in and fuck with me. Has anyone ever seen the documentary about the witness relocation program? <laughs> Yo, if you witness a murder and the government puts you in the witness relocation program for the rest of your life, the government will pay for your house, your car, your food, and all of your spending money. And ever since I watched that, I have been trying to see someone get murdered. <laughs> I'm peeking at people's windows. Anyone getting killed in this motherfucker? Here's my card. Eric Myers, professional murder witness. No murder is too small. If I see a couple arguing in the parking lot, I'll run up. You gonna let her talk to you like that? Like, who are you? I'm the star witness, motherfucker! Does no one under 35 even answer the phone? I hate when I call somebody, they don't answer, then they text me back immediately. You called? What's up? Well, I'll tell you if you answer the fucking phone. That's why I call, to tell you what's up. I hate it. You ever call someone, get their voicemail, and it's like that robot lady? She creeps me out, like, you have reached 714. I'm like, is that the lady from the GPS? It sounds like the same woman. How is she getting all these jobs with the worst voice I have ever heard? You think growing up her teachers were like, you're never gonna amount to shit with that annoying ass robot voice. She's like, one day you will see. <laughs> 
I will memorize directions to every place on earth, so fuck you. <laughs> you ever have somebody text you, call me? Motherfucker, you call me! You have my number! You just texted it! No one did that back in the day. No one knocked on your door. Come over and ring my doorbell. I gotta talk to you. <laughs> Hurry up, it's an emergency. No, I don't want to talk at your house. I have control issues, and I say when and where the conversation takes place. How's my hair? I saw this documentary about body dysmorphia. Do you know what body dysmorphia is? It's a mental disease where these people think they're very unattractive. I'm like, can you imagine finding out you don't have body dysmorphia? You go to the doctor, you're like, every time I look in the mirror, I see a horrible, unfuckable troll. Do I need medication? The doctor's like, no, you're good. I almost screamed when you walked in here. The good news is your mirror works perfectly. That's, you don't need Windex or anything. I'm dating, I'm online dating, I'm on Bumble. Do you guys know what Bumble is? It's a dating app on your phone. The flip is the women talk to the men first. So we are waiting. We are waiting and waiting. I met this woman on Bumble. She's like, Eric, do you mind if I bring my kid on the date? I'm like, yeah, that's cool. I think he's going to be a child. This kid was old. He was like 6'2". He had a goatee. I'm not paying for this motherfucker. He had the audacity to order a steak. The waiter's like, how do you want that? I'm like, on a separate fucking check. This kid is 56. They have a range on Bumble. Like, you can set it within 10 miles of Seattle. I ran out of women. They were like, expand your range. I'm like, to what? You can go up to 100 miles. 100 miles. I don't even have a car. I have to Uber to across state lines to get a hand job on this fucking app. What happens if 100 miles doesn't work? What do I do next? Download Google Earth? How bad is my picture? I hate when women have one picture on Tinder and there's like five women in the picture. How do I know which one is Megan? It's like four supermodels and one girl in the corner eating a stick of butter. I'm asking leading questions like, hey Megan, do you like butter? One woman on Tinder, her only picture was a cat. Not her and the cat, just the cat. Lady, what man are you trying to get with the cat? Do you want a guy who swipes on the cat? That guy is fucking nuts. That's got to be the shittiest date of all time. So how long have you lived in Seattle? Where's the cat? I'm trying to fuck Mr. Whiskers. Who the fuck are you? Was this a sick joke? God damn it. I've been cat person. I've been reading Garfield comics all day. This is bullshit. What am I going to do with this scratching post? Every religion has their own dating app. They have J-Date, Christian Mingle. They have one for Scientologists. It's just like Tinder, but the joint costs $500,000. <laughs> I suck on Tinder, though, because I'll ask a girl, I'll say hi, and she doesn't respond. We match. I say hi. That, that's the deal breaker? Hi? Like, what, that's a common greeting, huh? I, 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 I what? And Darren's like, Eric, they're women. They get a million highs a day. He's like, the trick is, you have to ask them an unusual question so they're curious, they're compelled to answer. Now you're talking. I'm like, oh, I got this. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> Don't do it. So the next girl I matched with, I was like, hey, <laughs> has you ever had sex on an A or mattress? She's like, no. I'm like, well, then you need to come over. <laughs> also, can you bring an A or mattress? Because I sleep on the floor. She's like, I am not having sex with you. I'm like, would you mind dropping off the AM? <laughs> I wasn't always a comedian, people. I wasn't always this cool. I worked at Taco Bell for six years. Yes, go ahead. This isn't a Taco Bell commercial. I <laughs> Me too. Has anyone ever seen the job application at Taco Bell? What wizard is writing this shit? Question number three, I swear to God, how did you hear about Taco Bell? <laughs> well, jeepers peepers, let me think. Uh, I live on Earth, you fucking idiot. It's not the Illuminati, I walked here from my house. How do you think I heard of Taco Bell? I googled diarrhea. And your name came up. Oh, I'm not done. They're like, has your family ever worked at Taco Bell? Yes, this is a legacy in the Myers house. My grandmother's last words was think outside the buns. Then she farted and died. They're like, who recommended you? Uh, my high school guidance counselor. He's like, Eric, the only thing lower than your grades are the prices at Taco Bell. Can you spell chalupas? No. I'll pull some strings. I know people on the inside. A weird place to grow. They asked what state you live in. Ah, uh, the state we're in. What do you think, I'm flying in for this shit? I live in Wichita, but I'm not allowed within 900 miles of their Taco Bell. You call our airfare and hotel for the nachos position. I need 19 days advance notice per shift, because I'm hitchhiking across the country. They ask if you're currently employed. Uh, let's go with no. What job do you think I'm leaving to come to Taco Bell? Right now I work at Burger King, but uh, I'm trying to take it up a notch. You know what I'm saying, motherfucker? I'm trying to get to the top of this taco game, bitch. My goal is Chipotle 2019. They drug test at Taco Bell? What are you, shitting me? Well, you can't make a taco when you're high. That is the easiest fucking thing on the planet to make. Put the meat in the shell. How high are you when you're fucking up a taco? You have to be high as shit. Steve, can you make a taco? Who's Steve? Yes, I would like a taco. Why should they be sober? Everyone in that drive-thru is drunker than shit. They should have a DUI checkpoint at the end of the drive-thru. Like, pull over, you piece of shit. Give me your receipt. Seven Doritos tacos, get out of the car. He's got lettuce in his hair. He's hiding something, goddammit. I want a crackhead behind the counter. They are fast as shit. Those tacos are flying off the shelf. Just taco, taco, taco. Steve, no one's even here. I see people. I see Count Dracula outside. This is actually a true story. I swear to God, this is 100% true. I lived in Orlando, Florida for five years. And I applied for a job at Disney World. And I swear to God, there was another Eric Sean Myers spelled the exact same way that it apparently murdered a bunch of people. And then bother checking the social security numbers. 
So I go in for the interview. They bring up my chart. They're like, well, Mr. Myers, we just don't think you're Disney material. I'm like, why not? Like, it says here you're the sunshine strangler. Don't you think I'd be in prison? You think I broke out and went to Disney World? I'm gonna hide on Space Mountain. No one can see shit in there. Well, if I did murder a bunch of people and somehow get out of jail, why would I apply for a job at Disney World? You think I'd have the balls? What would I possibly say? That was the old me. Now I get my anger out doing the teacups. The worst job I ever had, I was a telemarketer in Florida for a timeshare called Summer Bay Resorts. My job was to call people that had stayed there before and try and get them to come back. Now, you had to stick to the script verbatim. If anyone gave me any excuse whatsoever why they didn't want to return to Summer Bay, I had to say, is that your main concern? Or I was fired. I swear to God, I called this guy George Sewell. He goes, I hate Summer Bay. Last time I was there, there was blood all over the walls. <laughs> and I have to say, was that your main concern? <laughs> I hope so. Because if this story gets worse, I'm going to fucking kill myself. <laughs> what do you follow that up with? George, what are the odds of someone getting murdered in your room twice? It sounds like you're just being paranoid at this point. <laughs> Now, how will you be paying for the crime scene today? Is that MasterCard? Would you be more comfortable in a room where someone wasn't decapitated with a machete? Give me your credit card or there's going to be blood all over your fucking walls. I have nothing, motherfucker. I worked at American Eagle at the mall. My first day there, they're showing me around my boss. This is true. He's like, Eric, just so you know, if you see anyone shoplifting, you're not allowed to say anything, and you can't stop them from leaving the store because we might get sued. Then he's like, we also get 10% off on merchandise. I'm like, I think I get 100% off on merchandise. I worked there for two days. And now everything I own has an eagle on it. I worked at Pizza Hut. I used to get high on every delivery. And I got lost on every delivery. I'd call people from my phone high as shit. I can't find your house. Can you meet me somewhere? They're like, what? Where do you want me to meet you? How about Pizza Hut? <laughs> My very first job was in 1998. I got a job tearing tickets at a movie theater. I'm 18 years old. It was my senior year of high school. Now the big movie that came out that year was Men in Black. So everyone working at the theater, we all had to wear sunglasses in the spirit of the movie to look like Will Smith and Tommy Lee Jones. So I'm tearing these tickets, wearing these god-awful cheap sunglasses, and in through the door walks my high school dream crush, Allison Riccardi, with a huge group of her friends. And I see her and I'm so nervous. I'm like, oh my god, it's Allison, just be cool. Oh my god, it's Allison, just be cool. Now I have terrible acne, braces, glasses. I was a huge nerd back then, not like now. <laughs> and she comes up to me and she's like, hey, what theater's Men in Black in? And I'm so nervous, I just go, oh, oh, I don't know. And this girl behind her, Rachel Jensen, goes, how can you not know? And I swear to God, 100% serious, Allison goes, leave him alone, he is blind. <laughs> what? We had been going to school together for six years. You know your friends are like, that girl doesn't know you exist. Allison didn't know I could see. And if I was blind, why the fuck would they hire me to tear tickets at a movie theater? The only requirement is to see the fucking tickets. People are sneaking by me in packs. I hear you motherfuckers tiptoeing. I hear you motherfuckers. I got, I got you. I'll feel the door opening, goddammit. 
They're handing me Burger King receipts. Enjoy your show. Oh, I will. First of all, everyone working there had sunglasses on. Did she think we were all blind? That would be the shittiest movie theater on earth. Customers coming in. Can you help me find a seat? No. None of us can. Do you have Sour Patch Kids? We don't know. I'd like to see your manager. So would we. Good job. Called my dad today out in Florida. Every time I talk to my dad, I feel like the biggest pussy. Like, everything he did growing up was apparently the most epic shit on the planet. He's like, Eric, you don't know how good you had it, son. When I was a kid, I had to walk 10 miles to school in the freezing snow, uphill both ways. But he was raised in the 60s, I guess. That's how shit was. I came up in the early 90s. Shit wasn't that bad. What am I going to say when I have a son? How am I going to bitch? I look like a fucking idiot. Like, you know something, Buster? I didn't have a smartphone in 1992. We had a landline. If it ran, I had to walk 10 feet into the fucking kitchen across cold tiles. Upstairs, both ways. We didn't have caller ID. Whoever answered, I had to talk to those motherfuckers. We didn't have iTunes and Shazam. If I didn't know the name of a song, I had to go to Sam Goody at the mall and sing that shit to the cashier. We didn't have Instagram with filters. You wanted to look skinny in a picture? You had to be skinny when the fucking picture was taken. We didn't have Snapchat. You wanted to see your friend with dog ears? You had to eat fucking mushrooms. We didn't have PlayStation with 12 buttons. I had Nintendo. Two buttons. A and B. One was jump. The other was jump again. We didn't have cyber bullies. I got my ass beat in person. We didn't have Netflix. I had to rent movies from Blockbuster. Shit was three days late. It was $875. I'm still paying off Lethal Weapon 2. Too old for this shit. We didn't have porn on our phones or laptops in our hotel so we could jerk off with dignity and respect. We'd order porn off the hotel TV and the whole front desk knew what I whacked off to. It was right on the receipt when I checked out. I couldn't even look them in the eye. I was so ashamed. I'm like, Eric Myers, room 117. Like, okay, uh, how was uh, Buttfuckers 5? I didn't know what it was. I didn't know what it was. I never saw Buttfuckers 4, so I didn't know. Apparently there's a lot of buttfucking I should have known from the title. I thought it was a G-rated family Disney adventure. Get the fucking car, Jesus Christ. When does Buttfucker 6 come out? I'm asking for my wife. She's a sick piece of shit. Remember the opening credits of the hotel porn? Gets you all round up. The following movie contains nudity. Yeah! We're not talking no cats! Adult situations! Ooh! I'm an adult! And I want to see some situations! Strong sexual content! Show the fucking movie! Show this piece of shit! You've been charged, 1895. Stop the fucking movie! Guys, you've been awesome. Thank you so much. <laughs>